Hey everybody, welcome to the Southern Trust. Tonight I'm gonna to share a video with you, um, just a, a kind of a little bit more long form conversation video uh, about something I learned recently in a pretty big failure uh, in business. So I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned to the end for the takeaways or just skip to the end the last four or five minutes if you wanna get the takeaways, but um, yeah. Welcome to the Southern Trust and enjoy. All right, so it's been a while since I've put out a video, um, mainly because the real estate market has gone absolutely bonkers in Pensacola. Uh, I went from doing, you know, three or four inspections a week, and now I'm running, you know, seven to ten uh, if not more and so it's been uh, kind of kind of wild for the last couple of weeks so it's been hard to uh, to do a video or or get one edited um, long story short that's nothing but excuses but I do have a, a story I want to tell you um, about how I lost and I lost in business um, basically this is kind of how the story went. I was approached by a roofing contractor, um, to do a wind mitigation on a big complex. Um, the complex had over, uh, over a hundred plus units in it. Um, but they were only doing roofs on about 60 of them. The way the contractor explained it to me, um, it sounded like all of these properties were basically owned by one person, but actually they were all under one HOA and all of the individual units had individual owners. So let me explain to you why this became a loss for me and basically really complicated and convoluted. So. When we're doing wind mitigations, the wind mitigation has to be written um, for the person that owns the property. So the name on the wind mitigation has to match the name on the insurance policy. Well, the biggest problem with having all of these units not be under one name means that every single unit, so all 60 something units, which I think it ended up being almost 70, has to have its own individual wind mitigation um, versus just doing one mitigation for each building, which is what I was under the understanding that we were doing. Anyway, long and story short, um, I bid the job based on the understanding that all of these units were owned by the same person and that we were gonna be riding 12 wind mitigations for 12 buildings. Um, but it ended up being 70, almost 70 wind mitigations in 12 buildings. Um, and it's actually worse than if it had just been, oh, now I've got to write 70 wind mitigations. So we've got the job done. I ended up hiring some help to get all the wind mitigations Put together organized um, in a in a cloud folder organized by building by address with all the different owner names on them um, we have flattened files and unflattened files in case any changes need to be made um, in case somebody comes back and you know has some sort of change with their property and wants to make an update we can do that um, it got worse so the HOA got all my wind mitigations and they decided that they would print them off in black and white and send them to the homeowners. Well, naturally the homeowners are taking this black and white paper document that they've been given by the HOA and sending it off to their insurance company. Well. 
when they're sending it off to their insurance company, the insurance company looks at it, the underwriters look at it and they go, we can't take this. Um, in the wind mitigation world nowadays, basically if it's not color and you can't zoom in, you know, 10 X on the photo, the insurance company, the underwriter for the insurance company is going to reject it. Um, and if it's state farm or USAA, um, you better have a very, very clear picture of the clip and you better be able to count the number of like nails in the clip. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's that extreme. Like they'll reject it because they can't count the number of nails in the clip. Um, it's just a, a wild situation. Insurance right now in Florida is kind of wild anyways because they're canceling people for having 15 year old three tab roofs. And um, so it's good for the roofing industry. It's good for the home inspection industry, not necessarily good for the consumer um, because they're essentially being forced into putting a new roof on their property, um, which, you know, kind of eats up equity for a lot of people because let's be honest, most people aren't saving money like they should be. And so they don't have money put back for that rainy day if they need to put a roof on. Um, you know, so they're having to take out some kind of either they're taking it out on credit or they're taking it out in their equity on their home. So it's, it's, it's a tough situation. Um, you know, I benefit from it. So like, I can't say that it's totally bad and roofing companies benefit from it and it should help the cost of insurance to go down as insurance companies become more stringent on their requirements for homes in Florida. Um, but it certainly makes it much more expensive for those who either allow their policy to be canceled and go with another insurance company without um, putting a new roof on because most likely they're going to have an inflated rate to deal with. But yeah, it, it's just a tough situation in Florida right now. Um, particularly in our area because we had a hurricane 15 years ago. Um, well, we had one 16 years ago and 15 years ago. So we had one in 2004 and 2005. And so pretty much all the roofs in our area were replaced in that time frame. So that's, that's kind of why we're dealing with this issue right now. Um, long and story short, now I'm getting phone calls pretty much every day and emails from all of these insurance agents going, Hey, I got this report from so-and-so at such and such and such and such. Um, and so what I'm having to do is now go back in to my Google drive, find the address, get their email, create an email, which these are huge files. So normally it's taken up, you know, five to 10 minutes of my time. Um, and I'm, you know, either in an attic or I'm in the middle of writing a report or my phone's ringing or I'm, you know, trying to do an inspection. And so it's a lot of time, um, as a single man business away from doing the things that I need to be doing to make my business successful. Um, so it's, it's been a, a huge loss for me time-wise. Like if you look at <laughs> what I've made on this job, I, like I took three trips out there. Um, every of the three trips, two of them were at least half a day. Um, the other trip was just kind of a one-off. There was one unit that we couldn't get into. And so I had to make a, another special trip out there to get into that unit. Um, yeah, it was, it's just been one big loss all the way around. Um, but I decided that I could get mad and get frustrated and 
treat these insurance agents um, like I'm a prima donna and I don't have time to deal with it and you need to contact the homeowner because the HOA was supposed to provide them with a emailed digital copy of the report which is why I gave them an entire Google Drive folder with all the documents in it organized labeled perfect pretty as a peach for them to email them out to all their um, tenants but they didn't do that and so I had to decide what am I gonna do well I decided that I was going to choose reputation over frustration I was gonna own the loss because I had poor communication with the roofer. That was my first mistake. Um, the second mistake was when I discovered the problem, um, not negotiating harder for a higher rate, knowing what work it was going to take to get the job done. Um, and, you know, the final mistake was just, you don't know what you don't know. And I didn't have any anticipation of dealing with a problem like this, like with all the insurance companies calling me every day. Um, when you do 70 something wind mitigations, you're gonna get a lot of phone calls, especially when the homeowners are mailing in black and white copies to their agents. Um, those agents are gonna be reaching out to you going, what is this? Um, thankfully, all of the insurance agents that I've dealt with have been great. Um, they have, been really grateful for my time they've followed up with emails saying thank you very much so it really has been um, a, a pleasant experience but I have literally every time I get one of these phone calls I've had to fight in my mind like don't don't be that jerk build your reputation this is what you've built your reputation on is service like I I really believe that the, the agents that use me and the agents that have um, that stick to me and are loyal to me um, they do that because of the level of service that I provide them um, I'm available when they need me um, when they call they talk to me when they email they get emails from me when they need an inspection worked in in my crazy schedule we figure out how to get it done and if I can't get it done then I'm gonna refer them to another guy who can get it done um, it, you know it's just reputations everything in business if you don't have a reputation of being kind and of just absolutely killing it on the service side nobody's gonna want to use you Nobody's going to come back for more if you're not treating them with kindness, right? Kindness over everything. Um, you have no idea what kind of day the person who's on the other side of the line is having. Um, I know that from experience. I've worked in a call center and, man, you you would come across some of the wildest experiences I've ever had in my life on a phone. People just pouring out things to you that you just didn't even know because you were a kind voice on the other side of a phone. Um, so all that to say, if you want to build a business, you're going to fail. When you fail, learn from your failures. And own your failures but always service comes first and kindness over everything I hope this has been helpful um, I enjoy kind of just breaking down stuff like this having a having a conversation about what's happening in my business and what I'm learning and where I'm going and it really helps me kind of work through it so I hope it's been helpful to you. Um, there'll be some more actual home inspection content coming out. I got a video coming on wind mitigations 
another video coming on how to survive a home inspection and a follow-up on uh, four points and basically it's going to be how to save yourself lots of money whether you're selling your house whether you're keeping your house whether you've got a new roof or whether you've made some upgrades or additions to your house these tips are going to save you money so stay tuned subscribe if you're not subscribed click the subscribe button click the notification bell so that you'll know when we send out new content i'm really glad you're watching and hopefully we'll see you next time